Welcome to Electro Online. Now this next problem is quite challenging. We're trying to find the torque on the dam and the torque is relative to the base of the dam. So all this water or whatever the liquid is because it's not water, it's going to have the same density as what we found in the previous video. It's going to be not a constant density but k times y. So the liquid, whatever it is, gets more dense as you go down further down into the, into the liquid. And we do have a torque against this dam. It's a triangular dam. The base has a width of 2a. The top is, comes down to a point. So the, the liquid is pushing on the dam, trying to push the dam over, and we're trying to find the torque on that dam. Now notice the definition of torque is force times perpendicular distance. So we realize that the force on the dam is going to change as you go further and further into the liquid because the pressure changes. Force is pressure times area, which comes from the equation pressure is force divided by area. And of course, the pressure from the previous video was found to be one half kgy squared. So all that information together, how do we figure the torque of the dam? Well, the best way to think about it is that torque is force times distance, but since the force increases, what we can do is take a small little strip here. Take a small little strip where the depth from there to there is equal to y, so that would be equal to y from there to there, and then the width, let's call from here to here, let's call that x, so then the width of the strip is 2x, and the height of the strip would be equal to a dy. So now we have a small area dA, which is 2x times dy. And from that, we should be able to find the force on there. Let's see here. Uh, let's call the force dF. And the force, of course, is going to be equal to the pressure at that time times dA. And dA is going to be equal to, uh, that would be pressure times uh, 2x, times dy. So that would be the area of that little strip, dA, 2x dy, and then we have the pressure which is 1 half kgy squared. But we have two variables, we have an x and a dy, so we have to convert x to y. So think of this as being a straight line. Here we have the rise over the run, and notice that if we go all the way to the bottom, the rise would be a and the run would be H. Now be careful, we have the x and y variables uh, interchanged. Normally we write y equals mx plus b, but in this case b would be equal to zero, so we can get rid of that. But be careful that in this case the, the axis along the line here is y and the height is x. So actually what we're going to, we're going to reverse this, we're going to say x is equal to m times y. And the slope is going to be rise over run, that would be a over h. So we can write that x is equal to a over h times y. And that's the relationship between x and y relative to the edge of the dam and the slope that that makes. So when we plug that in here, we have df is equal to the pressure, which is one half kgy squared. So that's the pressure times 2 times x. Now x is going to be a over h times y, a over h times y, and now we still have our dy, and now we have our df defined. Why do we need that? Because to find the torque, I'm going to find a small torque element, which is equal to a small amount of force times the perpendicular distance from the, from the base of the dam to that strip, which is this distance right here, and that distance needs to be defined. So d torque is equal to df times that distance will be, well, the total distance h minus y. There we go. And then all we have left to do is take our definition for df and plug it into here. So now we can say that small amount of torque due to one of those strips is going to be equal to one half kgy squared times 2, and by the way, the 1 half and 2's cancel out, times a over h y times dy times h minus y. So let's go ahead, this 1 half cancels out this 2 right there. And then we can combine the y's, so we can say that the torque is equal to kg a over h 
times y squared times y would be y cubed dy times h minus y. And now notice we have defined a small amount of torque. Torque caused by that little strip over there that's this far above the base of the dam. Now all we have to do is integrate across the entire dam and we'll get the entire torque. Now notice since we have this h minus y there, we're probably going to end up with two separate integrals. So now we can write that the torque is equal to the integral of the d-torque. And of course we're going to integrate from y equals 0 to y equals h, from 0 to h, which is equal to the first integral is going to be this times h, so that would be the h's would cancel out. We end up with g k g a times integral of y cubed dy. That would be um, k g a. The h and that h cancels out, and we have times the integral of y cubed dy from y equals 0 to y equal h minus, when I multiply this times y, I get k g a over h, because the h's don't cancel, times the integral from 0 to h of y cubed times y, that would be y to the fourth dy. Okay, so now we're ready to integrate both of those integrals. So this is going to be equal to k g a times y to the fourth over 4, evaluated from 0 to h, minus here we're going to end up with kga over h times y to the fifth over 5 from 0 to h. And now we can go ahead and plug in the limits. When I plug in the lower limits, I get nothing. When I plug in the upper limits, I get the following. So this is equal to 1 fourth kga. That would be, uh, when I plug in h, I get h to the fourth minus 1 fifth k g a over h times uh, that would be h to the fifth i guess i don't need to bracket I get rid of the bracket here h to the fifth like that now this h will cancel out one of those so this becomes one this becomes four and now realize that we have this equal to one quarter minus uh, not one half this is one fifth good thing i caught that so one quarter minus one fifth times k g a h to the fourth and then finally one quarter minus one fifth notice that the common denominator so one quarter minus one fifth can be written as five over twenty minus four over twenty which is one over twenty so this can then be written as the torque is equal to one twentieth times k g a h to the fourth and that's how we find the total torque on that triangular dam when we have a liquid behind the dam which is not of constant density but density k times y and that is how that's done.